All right, so now we move into lesson two of trigonometry and it's the sine law. So this is where we start evolving from our past knowledge from junior high and even grade 10. And we start dealing with triangles that are of different form or non right angle triangles. So in this lesson, we're going to shift beyond saying, well, what happens if we have a right angle triangle, which we can use Sokotoa? Now we need to realize that this Sokotoa is not a valid approach in order to solve our problems that we have here. So let's take a look at class example one, where we still have right angle triangles and we can use Sokotoa to determine lengths. So our whole goal here is to determine the length of BC, which is the entire length of the bottom here. Well, knowing that we can use Sokotoa or specifically right angle triangle theories, um, what we can do is solve this bit by bit. So far, if I look at this problem here, I would realize that I have an angle here and a side length here. So I can most likely solve for this bottom value here, which I'm gonna call X. On my right hand triangle, I only have a degree, a degree, and then the unknown we're looking for, which I'll call Y is here. So there's not enough information on our right triangle here in order to determine what the Y value is. What do we need? We need at least one side length. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna determine not only the x value when we're dealing with the left triangle here, but we're also going to determine the height value or AD. So let's do those two things here. Off to the side, I'm going to solve for H first. If we have a degree or this angle A here, we have the adjacent, which is H, over the hypotenuse. The trig ratio or the primary trig ratio that involves adjacent over hypotenuse is cos. So we have cos of 20 degrees should be equal to H over 12.50. In order to get that 12 out of the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by 12.50. And I'd multiply the left hand side by the same thing, we are going to realize that it cancels away from my right hand side, and then I'm left with 12.5 times cos 20, which is equal to H. And therefore, our H or our AD value is equal to 11.746. And they actually tell us the units, it's centimeters here. So we have an H value of 11.746, and this is centimeters. Now, I want to solve for X because that's a piece of that highlighted component we're looking for as a total. So let's solve for X. How we do this is we realize we have a degree, an opposite, and a hypotenuse. That's a sine ratio. We're going to say sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is x all over 12.50. I multiply both sides all by the 12.50. When I do that, I realize it cancels on the right-hand side here, and I will have 12.50 times sine 20 is equal to X. So what we should get a value for BD or specifically X, X is equal to 4.275. And remember, this is centimeters. We can put that in terms of centimeters here. So this is 4.275 centimeters. Now, the nice part about this is we solve for the H value or this middle value. Now we have a degree, an opposite, and an adjacent. The trig ratio that allows us to solve for the y value here is going to be tan. So we're going to go below and go tan of the degree, which is in the top corner. It's 55. Tan 55 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the adjacent. Our adjacent is the height value, 11.746. If I multiply both sides, by the 11.746, it will cancel here on the right, leaving me with 11.746 times tan 55 is equal to y. And therefore, y, or in terms of side length, dc is equal to 16.775. And this is centimeters here. So I can go back up to my triangle and say this is 16.775 centimeters. 
Now they actually asked for that entire bottom link, BD plus DC or XY. We're gonna do that in our fourth spot here. So I'm gonna just kind of squiggle this out, squiggle this out so we can do our final solution. We have X plus Y, which is equal to the length of BD plus DC. This is equal to 4.275 plus 16.775. Therefore, the total value of x plus y is equal to, when I add all of these together, I get 21.05 centimeters. And that is our final answer for the entire length of that bottom segment there. All right, now this is where we start transforming from uh, dealing with right angle triangles to now what if we're not given a right angle triangle what tools can we use in order to solve angles and side lengths here's where we introduce the sine law suppose we had this given triangle here of acb and we want to establish some notation here well if we want to determine the side lengths side lengths are actually opposite of whatever their angle is so let's say i consider a here well, the opposite of angle A here is actually across the triangle, and we put this, or lowercase a, as the side length. Similarly with B, we go to the opposite side, and we say lowercase b is the side length B. And then finally, angle C, or side C here, its opposite represents the side length of C. Now, here's a big important tool going forward. This is something that will appear on your formula sheet, is the sine law. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C, and vice versa, the reciprocal sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. Now, why? how can we prove this? How can we establish this identity here? What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at two given triangles below here. So suppose I give you the triangles here, and one triangle is as follows. We have ACB, and then we flip that triangle and we mirror it. What we're going to do is we're going to look at two points here. We're going to look at angle A here and we're going to look at angle B here. Now, let's complete the following work to show that A over sine A is equal to B over sine B looking from the perspective of these two angles A and B. Well, what we'd realize is that if I'm looking for sine A in the first example, if I look from angle A, sine A is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or more specifically, we have this CD over B. Now you're probably wondering, where did B come from in this example? Remember, side length A is opposite of angle A, side length C is opposite of C, and side length B is opposite of B. If I solve this to isolate for B, or isolate for CD, I should say, because we're looking for this height value here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by B. If I multiply both sides by B, I know it cancels there on the right-hand side, and I'm given CD, or an isolated CD, when I cancel the Bs, is going to be equal to B times sine A. All right, now, considering triangle 2 here, similar notation, we have A, which is the opposite of angle A, we have B, which is the opposite of angle B, and C, which would represent the bottom section here. If I'm talking about the sine value of B, well, from the perspective of B, sine is opposite, which is the length CD, over the hypotenuse, which is A. So I'm gonna fill this in. We have CD over side length A, or more specifically, we could put this as BC originally, and then say that CD over the value of a because it's actually side length a if i want the a out of the denominator here and to isolate my cd what i'm going to do is similar to before i'm going to multiply that variable out of the denominator so i have a times sine b and on the right hand side the a's will cancel from the numerator and denominator therefore cd is equal to side length a times sine b now what do we notice here they're actually the same value CD is equal to B sine A, CD is equal to A sine B, therefore it must be that B sine A is equal to A sine B. So if we divide both sides here by sine A and sine B, 
which we will do is the following here, sine A, sine B, and divide by sine A, sine B. If we look at the left and right sides, things are going to cancel. The sine A's are going to go away. The sine B's are going to go away. And therefore, I get the identity as follows. Once I make my cancellations, B over sine B is equal to A over sine A. So what we could do is instead we could work with the AC and we could work with the other case. We could find that A over sine A is equal to C over sine C. That would equally be as fine. Hence, we get this rule of B over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. We can also say that the reciprocal is also true for these cases. And this is our sine law that we are going to use going forward here. Okay, let's stop here to say... To use the sign law, we must know three pieces of key information. So the three key, key pieces of information we need to know here are we need to know at least two angles and then a side. If we know two angles and a side or two sides and an angle, we are able to use sign law here. And we're not going to use Sokotoa method in order to solve this because we don't have a given right angle triangle. We'll identify right away there's no right angle triangle to solve these. Okay, now, what they want in this first example, class example two here, is to say, what is the length of BC? Well, what I want you to do right away is create notation here. The opposite of C or angle C is side length C. The opposite of angle A is side length A. The opposite of B is side length B. What they're actually asking us to solve for is side length A. So we have two pairings here. And this is a pretty uh, easy way to remember this. A, or degree A, is going to be paired with side length A. We have angle C, which is going to be paired with side length C. They always work in pairings for sine law. Once I know my pairings, well, I have A over sine A is equal to C over sine C. So now I make my substitutions here. We don't know what A is, but we do know the angle A, which is 75, is equal to C, which is 12.50, over sine C, which we know as 35. In order to isolate A here, I'm going to multiply both sides by sine 75. When I multiply both sides by sine 75, I should realize the sine 75s on the left disappear. I'm left with A. The value of A, once I type this into my calculator, the 12.50 divided by sine 35 times sine 75, this will give me a value of 21.05. And specifically, they give us measures of centimeters here. So the A value is 21.05 centimeters which is also the value BC. Now, you're probably thinking, why did I decide to use this part of sine law rather than, if we scroll up, we had the option to use where the sine A and the sine B and the sine C are in the numerator. Well, if we're solving for a side length, it would be less steps to put it in this form than it would be in this form. We will need to do one more step in this form than this form if we're solving for a side length. So if you're solving for a side length, this may be an important thing to put in your notes. If we're solving for a side length, this may be the way to go with the sine law. If we're solving for an angle, this would be the way to go. It involves fewer steps to do one versus the other for those specific situations. All right, let's look at class example three. Use sine law in the triangle to sh uh, show, use sine law in the triangle shown to determine the measure of ACB. Remember, when they throw it in this notation or they give us something in this notation like this, the angle they're referring to is actually angle C. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little red hash here or a little red mark indicating that this is the unknown angle we're looking for. So for this problem, what we must realize is that in order to get C, we actually need to solve for B first. Here's why. We don't have a correct pairing 
that allows us to have enough information for C. With C, we don't have an angle and we don't have a side length. So we can't use sine law involving C because we, it would be impossible to get any value out of that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pair together our A, which is a degree and a side length, and we have an unknown B angle and a B side length known. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for angle B. If I want to solve for angle B, I'm going to write it as the following. Remember, we always want to write the sine function in the numerator if we're solving for the angle of it over 6 is equal to, and I'm going to actually just keep, continue to write this in terms of general notation to start, sine B over side length B is equal to sine A over side length A, which is A. Now we can substitute our values. We don't know the value of the angle of B, but we do know its side length is six. This is equal to sine A, sine of 110 over 9.4, which is the side length A. Now, in order to start by for isolating uh, B here or angle B, we have to multiply both sides by six. When I multiply both sides by six, it's gonna eliminate the sixes from the left-hand side here, and I get sine B is equal to sine 110 over 9.4 times six. And now, in order to isolate for angle B, what I have to do is do the inverse, so B is equal to sine inverse of everything that was on the right-hand side, sine of 110 over 9.4 times 6, all in brackets. Therefore, my angle B is equal to, in this case, 36.8. So if angle B is 36.8 degrees, now, in order to get C, what I can do is say, the interior of a triangle, all their angles should sum to 180. So I'm going to go off to the side here, up in the top corner, 180 minus 36.8 minus 110. This should give me angle C because we know the interior sum should be 180 minus the other two angles will give us the unknown angle. Angle C is therefore equal to 33 degrees. And just to put it in the notation of the problem, it was angle ACB, which is actually equal to angle C. So we can put angle C is 33 degrees here, and there is our solution to the problem. So this may be a, a problem set where you may have to use sine law one time in order to get enough information to help you solve for a missing piece that you can't solve for in a first step. All right, example four, a surveyor measures a baseline PQ to be 440 meters long. So right away, we're going to fill that into the problem. 440 meters is the representative of PQ. He takes a measurement of the landmark R from P and Q and finds that angle QPR is equal to 46. Well, remember, in this notation, it's always symbolic of the middle letter, which represents the angle. So this is 46 degrees. And then he measures PQR, or angle Q, to be 75 degrees. Calculate the perimeter of P, Q, and R. So, so far of the perimeter, we only know 440. We need a couple more values here. We need side Q and we need side P. Once we have side Q and P, we're able to solve for all of it or add them all together and get the total perimeter. So in order to do this, step one is I'm thinking if they give me two degrees here, what I can actually do is say, oh, if I know their total is 180, I can easily get the angle of R. Angle of R is equal to 180 minus 46 degrees minus our other degree, which is 75. Therefore, angle R, which is also equal to angle PRQ, is equal to 59 degrees. So we can go back up to our triangle. We can write in 59 degrees here. Now we have to use sine law to solve for P and Q. Okay, let's create some pairings here. P is 46 degrees with unknown side length P. We then look at something like 440 
and it's tied to the degree r of 59. With this pairing, let's set up our sine law for the value of p. Side length p over sine p is equal to, we're using r as our comparable, over sine r. When we plug this in, we have p, which is our unknown, over sine of 46 is equal to r, which our side length r is 440, over sine of the degree at r is 59. Now, I multiply both sides by sine 46. And if I multiply both sides by sine 46, I realize it cancels on the left-hand side here, leaving me with just p is equal to 440, 440 divided by sine 59 times sine 46. We get a p-value equal to 369.251. Now, were there any units here? Yes, they said it was meters. So what I can do here is I can write in 369 point 251 meters. For the Q value, we're going to do a very similar process here, but what I'm going to do is create another pairing. So now that I know angle P and P and I know angle R and R, I could pair Q and angle Q with either one of those. Let's say I pair it with P again. Well, our setup is going to be if I have, actually, let's set it, let's set up with R just because we have now, we're looking for Q Q over sine Q is equal to R over sine R. When we plug in the values we know, we don't know Q, and it's over sine of Q's angle, which was 75, is equal to R, which is 440, over sine R, which in this case is 59. I multiply both sides by the sine 75 to get it out of the denominator on the left. And so this is sine 75. I multiply both sides by that sine 75. It's going to cancel both left and right. Or on the left-hand side, we're going to be left with Q. And it's equal to 440 over sine 59 times sine 75. Therefore, Q is equal to 495.828. And this is meters. So we can now go back to our problem and say Q is equal to 495.828. And this was meters. Now, to get our total perimeter, we've almost got there. We found our Q, our P, and our R side lengths, which maybe I should write the R there just to make it clear. Our total is therefore, therefore the total is equal to 495.828 plus 369.251 plus 440. When we add these all together, the total is therefore equal to, for this value, 1305. And that is to the nearest meter because we want to look at the instructions and they say we should specifically look at it to the nearest meter. So there is our total of the perimeter 1305 meters all right now it's time for you to go into the assignment i would definitely practice this sign law is a little difficult to start but with a couple practice problems i'm sure you're going to build your confidence very quickly